praise me. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Our hopes and dreams have come true. We do not have to fear death, for Christ goes before us. Praise be to God who has raised Christ from the dead and given to us new life. Open our hearts to receive your wondrous love, words of love, O God. Help prepare us for the opportunities to serve you by serving others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will you please join me in the call to worship? The darkness is banished. The brightness of God's love floods in on us. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Up from the Grave He Arose. It's number 322 in your hymnal. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> testify about him 
that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we of all people are to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For, all, all, for as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. After he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that this does not include the one who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. Our next hymn is page 302, uh, 304, Easter People Raise Your Voices. Um, and let me explain something real quick. In your bulletin, I, I made this change this morning, in your bulletin, it says that we're going to sing the first verse of Easter People Raise Your Voices, have the gospel lesson, and then sing the next two verses. But it's Easter, and we need to sing. So we're going to sing the entire hymn, page 304, then we'll have the gospel lesson, and then we're going to sing, where is it? Where are we singing? 302, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. So please stand as you're able and turn to page 304 in your hymnal. Simon Peter came following him, 
and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him that he said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please continue standing as we sing Christ the Lord is risen today, page 302.
come, now is the time. And if you're just young at heart, and you still want to come forward, that'd be fantastic too. for the light of God what's the pretzel represent prayers the folding hands of prayers we added water for the purity jelly beans we had our jelly bean prayer remember Easter in general and last week, a basket of empty Easter eggs was added. This week, we're going to add a rock. Why a rock? Why would we add a rock to a sacred space? When the women went to the tomb, they were expecting to find it sealed shut, just as it had been left. The rock used to seal the tomb would have been very heavy, and it would have taken several strong people to move it. But it was open. Jesus had risen from the dead, but the women didn't understand that right away. They saw the angel dressed in white, and it scared them at first. Sometimes even good and exciting things can be scary when, when we are surprised or don't understand what's going on. But his was very, very good news. As we look at the rock, remember the wonderful day when the stones rolled away from Jesus' tomb and rose from the dead. Today, we add the rock to our table. And then we light our candle. Today, I'm not adding any new lists, any new names to our chain, but instead, I'd like to honor them all by reading. We pray for our shut-ins, for those sick or in need, for loved ones traveling, for pastor's mother, for our new minister, Nikki, the Logan Church for the world. We pray for those that suffer in silence and those that are on our hearts that are not spoken aloud. We pray for, pray for those who are suffering from pain and illness and are shut in. We pray for the elderly our district superintendent, our leadership team, for the fire department, and our rescue squad, for our teachers and our students, our confirmands, and our mentors. We pay, pray for Pastor Regina, our military families, the military men and women, the people in Ukraine and surrounding areas, the world leaders, our leadership team, 
our nursing home residents, the Randy Park family, <coughs> the grass fires in Nebraska and Texas, Pastor Regina's family, our world leaders in conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and finally, our church with changes. We ask that you not keep this only in mind, these, these prayer requests only in mind during Easter, but year round. Would everyone like to join me in prayer, please? Echo me, please. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for Jesus. Our rock, and our, redeemer. our rock and our redeemer. We ask you to help us, to, help us. To, share to share the good news of Jesus with everyone we meet. Everyone we meet. May your light shine through me, shine through me. Each, and each and every day. And may I return, may I return. To, worship to worship again. Amen. Thank you so much, Barbie, for your um, willingness to do this throughout the season of Lent and Easter. It, it's made a big difference, and um, you are to be commended. Thank you. Before we get, I get started with the sermon, on the back of your bulletin is a couple of questions. Those are for you to ponder during the service. Every week, the confirmands. Eva and Katie are given a sheet. Um, actually, I haven't given it to Katie yet, but here it is. And it has, you know, the date, what the scripture was, what the sermon title was, how would you sum summarize the sermon, and a few of the questions that you have there. Um, so, during or after the sermon, um, if you would like to kind of jot down some thoughts, there's someone mentioned to me, you know, the compromise are doing it. Why don't we all do it? So. There you go, and I will try to I'll put those in the bulletin each week. We've also been talking about not so much climbing ladders of success to get to where we want to be, but learning that we are good enough and that God expects us to tend our gardens. So my gift to you today is a packet of seeds, and you will be told more what, other than planting them when you get home, you'll be told what to do with those. Um, during the sermon, after the sermon. So if you'll just kind of pass those around and everyone get a packet or two of seeds. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christmas has a large and colorful cast of characters, including not only the three principal figures themselves, but the angel Gabriel, the innkeeper, the shepherds, the heavenly host, the three wise men, Herod, the star of Bethlehem, and even the angel animals kneeling in the straw. In one form or another, we have seen them represented so often that we would recognize them anywhere. Do you agree? We know about the birth in all its detail, as well as we know about the birth of ourselves and our children, maybe more so. The manger is as familiar as home. We have made a production of it, and as minor attractions, we have added the carols, the trees, the presents, cards, Santa Claus, Ebenezer Scrooge, and so on. With Easter, it is entirely different. The Gospels are far from clear as to just what happened. It began in the dark. The stone had been rolled away. The Gospel of Matthew alone speaks of an earthquake. In the tomb, there were two white-clad figures, or possibly just one. 
Mary Magdalene seems to have gotten there before anybody else. There was a man she thought at first was the gardener. Perhaps Mary, the mother of James, was with her and another woman named Joanna. One account says Peter, too, with one of the other disciples, came. Elsewhere, the suggestion is that there were only the women and that the disciples, who were somewhere else, didn't believe the women's story when they heard it. There was the sound of people running, of voices. Matthew speaks of fear and great joy. Confusion was everywhere. There is no agreement as to the role of Jesus himself. Did he appear at the tomb or only later? Where? To whom did he appear? What did he say? What did he do? It is not a major production at all. And the minor attractions we have created around it, the bunnies, the baskets, the dyed eggs, have so little to do with what it's all about that they neither add much nor subtract much. It's not really much of the story when you come right down to it. And that is, of course, the power of it. It doesn't have the ring of great drama. It has the ring of truth. If the gospel writers had wanted it to tell, had wanted to tell it in a way to convince the world that Jesus indeed rose from the dead, they would presumably have done it with all the skill and fanfare they could muster. Here there is no skill, no fanfare. They seem to be telling it simply the way it was. The narrative is as fragmented, shadowy, incomplete as life itself. When it comes to just what happened, there can be no certainty that something <coughs> unimaginable happened. There can be no doubt. The symbol of Easter is the empty tomb. You can't depict or d domesticate emptiness. You can't make it into pageants and string it into lights. It doesn't move people to give presents to each other or sing old songs. It ebbs and flows all around us. He rose. A, a few saw him briefly and talked to him. If it is true, there's nothing left to say. And if it's not true, there's nothing left to say. For believers and unbelievers both, life has never been the same again. For some, neither has death. Those are the words of Frederick Beekner as he wrote in his article, Easter. In our sermon series that we started back the sun, first Sunday of Lent, called Good Enough, based on the book by Kate Bowler, Good Enough, we journeyed through Lent, examining what good enough looks like in our lives as Christians. We have been enlightened, I hope, to the ways that we strive and struggle to climb the ladder to what our worldly self considers success. And we've heard that God does not expect us to strive and struggle for perfection. We've learned that tending our garden is what we are to be about. God tells us it is okay to be good enough, good enough Christians. We come to Easter after 40 days of examining our hearts and our souls. After the events of Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, we come for the happy ending the and they lived happily ever after part we think truly exists. The resurrection story proclaims hope over despair, life over death. Yet we know that life continued and continues for us as a story <coughs> of spiking heartbreak, moments that are not forever fixed. The nature of being created for love is that, is that we will always 
hunger for more. That there is never enough life and love to satisfy. And endings are often too soon. But perhaps a good enough faith is one that moves through the chronic nature of being incurably human with an eye for resurrection moment that assures us that good enough life is worthy of our amazement. What is amazement? Maybe it's that which we cannot imagine. Do you have other definitions? Mary Magdalene came to the tomb in darkness that morning and found it empty. Mary was no stranger to darkness. Mary was one of a group of women that we first learn about earlier in the book of Luke who, who were followers of Jesus and traveled from town to town and village to village as he preached and told his story. Mary knew darkness. Mary had demons, seven to be exact, until Jesus drove them out of her. Mary knew darkness as she stood at the cross with the others on that Good Friday, witnessing Jesus' humiliation, torture, and crucifixion. Mary came to the tomb that morning in the darkness, facing something unimaginable, not what she expected at all. Her Lord and Savior was gone. The tomb was empty. Where have they taken him? How am I and the others to give him a proper burial? Mary is distraught and she weeps uncontrollably. Then she meets the gardener, at least who she thinks to be the gardener, until he calls her name. Mary. Rabboni, she exclaims. And I love this part. Mary becomes the first preacher. As Jesus tells her, go and tell my brothers. Mary is the first preacher to share the good news. Mary, out of the darkness, announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Throughout the New Testament, we see Jesus in a garden many times and after his crucifixion he is laid in a tomb in a garden at his resurrection he is in a garden truly gardens represent significantly the christian faith most all of life all of it that i know of begins in the dark we were all formed in our mother's womb in darkness. Seeds are planted in darkness. They grow in the dark of the earth or soil until their appointed time to burst forth with new life. Gardening requires a certain kind of hope. Gardening and farming alike, as you well know, requires a certain kind of hope. Envisioning new life in the midst of despair and death, the very act of gardening and farming is hope. This hope is the exact kind of hope that Mary was looking for that first Easter morning. Hope out of darkness. Can we find our way out of the darkness and into the light in the hope of new life? Do we listen for the voice of Jesus calling out our name? Do we seek eternal life as we tend our gardens? The gardener in the story who turns out to be the tender, tender of our souls is calling us to himself, to hope and joy, and to life everlasting and free.
Amen. Will you pray with me? We have to admit it, Lord, that we had our doubts. We have heard the resurrection story, and for so many years, it has remained just a nice story. But this time it is different. This time we have walked the path with Christ. We have journeyed through the wilderness and valleys, to the mountaintop, to the courtyard, to the garden, and to the cross. Now you bring us to the empty tomb and to the joyous news of the truth of Christ. Forgive us when we so easily doubt the truth of his resurrection. Forgive us when we feel we have to have absolute proof of everything. Your love in Jesus Christ is all the proof we need. You conquered death and sin. You brought us to new life. We praise your holy name and we sing our unending hymn of hope and thanksgiving. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. We rise in hope and celebration of the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The journey has been long and it does not end here, but rather we are given new marching orders to go forth in confidence for God, to witness to the good news of the resurrection and the power of God's love in Jesus Christ. We are called to be bearers of the light and hope to all areas in which darkness stands. Keep us open to the needs and hearts of other people. Help us not to be so quick to condemn as we are to love. Help us to reach out in kindness and compassion whenever and wherever we can for healing and hope. Remind us again of the many ways in which you have and continue to bless our lives. For those we have lifted to you today for healing and wholeness of life and those we hold close in our hearts, we ask for your healing, comfort, and peace with confidence that you are the great healer of all hurts. We thank you for this day and for the many gifts and blessings you pour out on us that we could never deserve. We ask that you accept our tithes and offerings this day as we return a portion of your blessings to you for the use of your kingdom in this world. We ask all these things in the name of the resurrected Christ. Amen.